The Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, CEREP, has asked the federal government and Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, to provide spending details of public funds and private sector donations and other benefits during the lockdown in Abuja, Lagos and Ogun State for COVID-19 pandemic. CEREP demanded for the provision of socioeconomic benefits to the country's poorest and most vulnerable people, including details of beneficiaries of any cash payment, cash transfers, food distribution during the above-mentioned period. In the Freedom of Information FOI request dated April 4, 2020 by the CEREP Deputy Director, Kola Waleo Luadari, the organization also asked the federal government and CBN to disclose information on the details of the implementation of the school feeding program during the lockdown and closure of schools in several states where the program has been implemented, including the number of children that have so far benefited from the program, the names of the communities and closure of schools, as well as the number of cooks engaged. In two FOI requests sent, CEREP is seriously concerned that millions of the country's poorest and most vulnerable people have not benefited from the announced palliatives, donations, reported cash payments, cash transfers and other benefits. Rather than making physical cash payments to the country's poorest and most vulnerable people, CEREP urged CBN to begin electronic cash transfers to all beneficiaries through individuals' bank verification numbers, BVNs, already available through the banks. Joining us live via Skype from Ogun State is Nigeria's playwright and poet, Noble Roulette, Professor Wole Shoinka. Thank you for joining us, Professor. You're welcome. Thank you. Now, like most of us, you've witnessed the lockdown, so to speak, in Ogun State. How has that been for you, sir? My stay here has been very, very quiet, very relaxed. I've been able to catch up. Lot of work and person. Now, I, I want to ask you for your opinion. How, how well would you rate the, the federal government and how far they've, they've gone in curtailing and putting um, measures in place to curtail the further spread of the coronavirus, COVID-19? Uh, a mixed bag, of course, and I am more conscious of what has been done by states and actually prefer that methodology because they, the uh, leaders in those states are on the ground. Uh, when you talk about lockdown, for instance, there are different kinds of lockdown, different stages, different grades, and those kinds of decisions I prefer for them to be taken by states. Right. In, in your opinion, sir, um, would, would you say our leaders are getting it right or missing it again this time around? Your, our leader, our leader, are you talking about the president? Our leaders, the federal government, our leaders, the federal government. Oh, the federal government, yes. The federal government, um, from the, the, what I would say, the shopping list, which was read out by the president, for instance, there's nothing basically wrong with it. The problem is when people lose confidence in governments, it becomes very serious in emergencies like this. The presidency, you can have a program. Now, who are those who execute the program? How did they come about that program? Some people in the president will be telling people like me to go in the right place about, uh, about a disaster, an epidemic like this. Yes. And if I may use this opportunity, by the way, to make a comment on this. You see, there are people around the presidency who think this is a show to this individual. He said Governor Orton was putting on a show, a performance. This is a mass burial. He said he had a mass world press, uh, lining up coffins, There's human beings there, you know, cadavers, and as it was only a show. Go and check the statement of that individual. So you see, it's people like this who make one lose confidence in, uh, this, uh, with the center, the people who serve that center. That's a human being who thinks the epidemic it's Nollywood. It's Sakaya, Sakajojo. Show. Sure. How do you then trust anything that comes out of a situation like that? Right. See, that's one of the reasons why I insist that uh, decentralization, especially in a crisis like this, is crucial, in fact, to the success of any program for the containment of a disease, of an epidemic. You're dealing with people. You win their trust. You bring them in. You educate them. You don't say like the another governor, for instance, or not. Now, state, this is where the problem is. Yeah. Who said, right? Anybody who tries to escape sanatorium from isolation, that's crazy. That's now, crazy. That's talking like that's the kind of language I expect from the center, not from a state. I'm sorry, you're trying to say something. I, I don't want to be monopolizing. And all right, now, you, Professor. You're not coming. 
Yeah. Now, Professor, recently you were, you were in the news challenging the presidential announcement to lock down some key states. Do you want to shed more light on why you challenged that pronouncement? Yes, I'm asking, if you remember my statement, in fact, I invited the lawgivers and the NBA. I said, please educate us about this. I saw, why are they getting excited? I'll tell you why they're getting excited. Because they know very well that I'm laying the grounds for some future charges against those who control events at the presidency. The charges are enormous. I ask myself very often, who is in charge at the presidency? Who really is in charge? Uh, this is a very big question, and I want you to put it to one side. We're going to deal with it when this crisis is over. And so I asked the MBA and legislators, tell us, does the president really have the constitutional right to deal in terms